Julius Caesar faces off against his political rival, the former son-in-law, Pompey the Great. This battle will influence whether Rome remains a republic or Caesar becomes its dictator. You stop them halfway through that hill. Today, four university graduates will pit their wits against the tactical genius of Caesar. Take out these people flanking on the right hand side. Can four of Britain's most highly educated elite outsmart one of the greatest military leaders in history? This is Time Commanders. In our 21st century battle command center are a team of graduates from Nottingham University. Ollie Menel, age 22, rank general. Ruth Wilson, age 21, rank general. Tristan Cowell, age 22, rank lieutenant. Becky Ansell, age 21, rank lieutenant. Now, how do you all know each other? We all went to university together in Nottingham. So you know everything about each other? Uh, I do not. We like to think this way. <laughs> Becky, you enjoy horse riding, am I right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Could your knowledge of horses be useful in this battle, do you? Um, I hope so. I hope it could come useful with the cavalry element of it. I hope that, uh, I don't know, maybe I can pass on a few pearls of wisdom to these guys. Can you stop the... <laughs> History degree. Why are you laughing? Okay. Absolutely. So there's one history degree between the four, yeah. after a flying start. It's modern history and not really warfare history, so probably not that helpful. Yeah. <laughs> I studied Roman history in my degree, though, Greek and Roman history, because I do classics. So. And how much of it do you remember? Um, not very much, I have to say. <laughs> Ollie, what about you? Do you uh, have any military experience? I was in the officer training court at university for a couple of years. So no military experience? Not at all, no. <laughs> I can play around with wooden, wooden guns and stuff, but that's about it. Well, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I'll go into investment banking. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, just make a note. Make money. Banker. <laughs> you are a general. Yes, I am. And Ruth, you're a general. Yeah, I am. How was that decided? Oh, well, I fancy to be a general, and, and so did Ruth. And, uh, so did I. I did really. And so, so, so did you, but Becky, did, Becky wasn't too bothered, and we decided to say boy girl, boy girl. And so it was either me or Tristan, and we had a bit of a fight out back, and I came out on top. So Tristan and Becky, you let them walk all over you? No, no you they, won't, they won't be walking it all over us. <laughs> well, you're going to have to take orders, you know that. You're going to yeah, have to do as you're told. No, I know. Are you happy to do that? Yeah, I will take orders, but if I, if I think that there's a better way of doing it, I will state that. Polly, I understand you believe that men are better at strategic thinking than women, is that right? Well, this is a couple of known facts, really, in life, isn't it? Women, women aren't very good parkers because we've got the whole spatial awareness thing. And, um, and, and the other thing is that men are just generally better with thinking ahead, a bit of strategy here and there, so... All right. Before we do anything else, let's meet the two historians who are experts in all this. They know everything there is to know about history. Monitoring the team are two military experts. Dr. Eric Nussbacher, Senior Lecturer in War Studies, Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Mike Lowes, Combat and Weapons Historian. They can't be stumped, and they'll be watching your every move, and then later they're going to come down and uh, tear your battle plan to pieces. I'm going to give you a few more clues now. The first thing you need to do is grab hold of those clipboards, and in the name of humanity, take as many notes as you can, because every note you take could prove crucial in the battle. All right, a little more information about the battle you're going to fight. It's the Battle of Pharsalus. You're going to be in charge of Pompey fighting Caesar. Have a look at this. The year is 48 BC. The place is Pharsalus in northern Greece. Civil war rages between two Roman leaders. On one side, Pompey the Great, 
commander of the Roman forces loyal to the Senate. On the other side, the Maverick leader Julius Caesar and 20,000 loyal soldiers. For four centuries, the Roman Republic had thrived and expanded through warfare. It now controlled the Mediterranean, North Africa, and much of Europe. Julius Caesar, the governor of Gaul, had played a major part in that expansion. So had Rome's legionary cohorts, who had become experienced and efficient fighters in the process. Caesar's legions were particularly battle-hardened and fanatically loyal to the young leader. But Caesar's success created jealous enemies amongst Roman senators who feared his ambition and popularity. Among his greatest rivals was the celebrated Roman general Pompey the Great. In 50 BC, Caesar's command in Gaul came to an end and he was ordered to surrender his army. He refused. Instead, he mustered his troops and crossed the Rubicon River into Italy. It was an act of war. Pompey and the majority of the senators fled eastward to Greece. Within two months, Caesar and his legions had gained control of Italy. But the civil war wasn't over. In Greece, Pompey gathered a force of 45,000 new recruits, a mix of inexperienced legionaries and eastern cavalry. Needing to defeat Pompey in order to win the civil war, Caesar followed his enemy to Greece. The two armies meet on August the 9th, 48 BC, near the town of Pharsalus. Pompey is 58 years old with an excellent military record, but he hasn't commanded an army in battle for 13 years. Aggressive senators in Pompey's camp have pressured him into fighting, knowing they have the advantage of numbers and high ground. Caesar, on the other hand, is in his early 50s and at the peak of his ability. He's a brilliant war tactician whose army is experienced, loyal, and battle-seasoned. Both leaders know each other's weapons, training, and tactics. The only variable is each side's battle plan. If Pompey's army is victorious, the rebellion will be crushed, the civil war over, and the republic restored. If Caesar wins, the greatest empire on earth could fall under the control of a single man. The stakes are high. Battle is imminent. All right. All you have to do is, as Pompey, take on one of the most successful generals in the history of history and win. Any thoughts? Easy. <laughs> <laughs> what did you glean from that? Um, the Caesar's got the more um, sort of experienced and loyal soldiers. Well trained. Um, but well, you've got more numbers. We've got more numbers, yeah. yeah. Um, is that it? But he's aggressive. Quite aggressive. Oh, we've got strong cavalry as well, so get them, get those horses in action. Yeah. Interesting. There's a lot, of, a lot of confidence on their side that um, maybe we could exploit. Pompey's got a big army. Pompey has has put together all kinds of nif naf and bobtail and stuffed them all into a big sack to make each of his legions. And Pompey's got big legions, but they're soft. It's like Caesar's going out there with a bunch of bricks and Pompey's going out there with a bunch of big marshmallows. Let's have a look at where the battle's going to take place. Have a look at this. Pompey's army is positioned above the battlefield. The high ground slopes down to a river and the open plain. Caesar's small force is gathered at the far side on flat ground. The river guards one flank of his army. Because the team is up against a smaller but much more experienced force, they need to identify and harness any advantage this terrain offers. It's absolutely critical that they spot the significance of the river. They need the river to protect their flanks. They must line up in the right place. Tell me what you can see. Let me just show you. Um, well, we've got, it's, it's like quite like a mountainous area, I guess. So they've got 
this bit here, which, which I presume is, is high up, it's sloping down that way. And is that right? You're looking at me like I'm going to help. I'm just an innocent bystander. <laughs> surely, surely both these are, are peaks, aren't they? And they both run down that way because that shows the gradient going down. They are peaks, and don't call me Shelley. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, we've got high points. High points over here. Or also a river here as well. What, what use might the river be, or what hindrance might it be? Well, it just means you can't do like, like if, you, if we're going this way, we can't do like a right flank really and go around the back that way. Ollie's grasped one possible use of the river. It prevents flanking. But he's missed its most important use, that if it prohibits flanking, it's ideal for flank protection. It just all depends on where troops are and everything. But, yeah, tricky area. What about the vegetation? Can you see that? What, are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> just like trees, like if it's dense in the forest area, or, you know, that would, might hamper us as well. Okay, okay. Well, because these are the forest areas, yeah. and so it's quite a dense part over there. It's all open space there. The team has identified key geographic features, but not their tactical uses. With an opponent as formidable as Caesar on the other side of the battlefield, they can't afford to lose advantage to oversight.